Welcome to the English Waffle. Hello, listeners, and welcome to the English Waffle,、um, which we have created to help you improve your English through regular listening and practice. Our work here is helped by kind donations from from listeners.、Um, And we just want to thank all those people who have、uh, kindly donated、uh, through Buy Me a Coffee.、Um, thanks a lot for that. And、um, you know these donations really help us to keep the podcast going、uh, by helping us to cover in in a small way some of the costs、um, associated with making the the podcast, like the websites and the transcription、um, software. So、um, a good way to help support us, if if you can, is by downloading the transcripts.、Uh, so you may know that after episode forty eight,、uh, from episode forty nine onwards, we are charging a small amount for the transcripts,、um, really just to help us、uh, set off the cost of the software we use to to create the transcripts. Um, and there's actually a sale on at the moment. We're we're selling them all at half price, normally one pound, but they're all going for fifty pence.、Um, so get on there right now and get yourself a bargain before we put the price up. Anyway,、uh, let's get on to this week's episode.、Uh, we're talking about bedtime stories this time.、Uh, it's another short chat.、Uh, we talk about well, actually, I spend most of the time talking this time. Um, reading, bilingualism, imagination, and lots more stuff.、Um, so listen to the conversation to find out what my family's routine is for bedtime stories.、Um, what we think about children children's imagination, and why Mike believes Father Christmas is real.、Uh, well, I mean, why why wouldn't he? Anyway, to check、uh, what you've understood in this conversation, you will be able to go onto the English Waffle website and、uh, have a look at the quiz. In, there may be some delay in getting it up there,、um, so you can、uh, have a look at the transcripts、uh, first of all. If you want to go and just download、uh, the transcript, <coughs> I will get the quizzes up as soon as possible.、Um, <coughs> and in the meantime, enjoy listening, and I'll speak to you. After the chat. English listening. Oh, so do you、uh, do you read、uh, do you read Martin? Martin's how old now? He's seven, six, seven. He's seven late this year. Yeah. 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 And and do you typically do you read him a story before he goes to bed, or does he read his own story now? Or what 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 do you guys? What's a normal uh, uh, routine for you? Yeah, I mean, he, it's quite interesting because we take turns. So tonight it was supposed to be my night. To, to put Martin to bed,、uh, Sandra's covering because obviously we've got important English waffle business.、Um, but、um, yeah, we take turns, and then one night he gets a story with Sandra. One night he gets a story with me. It's great because he gets he gets Spanish one night, English the other night, and、um, we. I, I like to read to him because I can read. That's because com- sorry, so that, that that's because Sandra's a Spanish speaker. For those who yeah, no, so sorry,、Sandra's- yeah, could, yeah.、Uh, Yeah, yeah. So, so it's really good for him because we we we're trying to make sure that he can, he gets exposure to both languages, which is great. But、um, I like reading him stories. We've got a couple of stories which I, I suppose maybe slightly older than his his age, reading age. But、um, I like him to just to lie and listen because he's he's gone past、yeah. the stage now where he needs to look at a picture. He's he's really good at.、Yeah. At reading stories and imagining what's happening, it's nice. Some of these books have the odd picture in, and you can see, you know, get an idea. But no,、yeah. I mean, he's reading. He's reading himself independently quite a lot now. He's got a little. Is my 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 mum? He's got. He's got good imagination. Yeah,、isn't、I think、it? so. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think most kids do at this age. I think. I think when it comes to reading, imagination isn't the problem. And even, even when it comes to writing, imagination isn't the problem. It's just it's the mechanical. I think imag- imagination is natural. We all、yes. have imagination and, and kind of a creative spark. The the, the artificial thing is is learning how to actually in, decipher words on a page. And to recreate them when you're writing, that's 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 totally man-made and well, man-made. Yeah, it's not natural. It's not. It's not something we just、right. spontaneously do. It's something you have to learn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, if you look at any kind of child development、uh, stuff, that, it's really clear that learning stuff and learning to how to speak is so natural. We do、yeah. it just because we love it and it helps、yeah. us communicate. 
But yeah. when once you get to reading and then writing, it's, it's so much, so much harder. Yeah. Okay, and going back then to the stories, he, he what what kind of stories does he enjoy reading? Um, well, we've got two on on the go at the moment. One is uh, the night I met Father Christmas. Was one of them. It, it's a really nice story um, because it's kind of when you read it, you kind of think, oh, it sounds a bit like a Christmas Carol. You know, the story with Scrooge and then he he's, he has three visitors, three ghosts who kind of teach yeah. him lessons about life. And, and the, the ghost of Christmas past and the ghost of Christmas That's present. It. That's it, yeah. yeah. They, they teach him not to be so tight-fisted and, and mean. And, um, yeah, that's right. With his yeah. money and his... Yeah. his and is just to, just to be more open, open and generous. And this is kind of the same story, but it's really clever because it's based around a guy who's father, a boy who meets Father Christmas, but it's not really Father Christmas. And then this Father Christmas tells him a story about an elf from the North Pole or something, and who goes on this journey and has three visitors. And in the end, we, you find out that the Father Christmas is actually this elf. And then we we don't know yet why he's father christmas and where's the, the father christmas we all know we don't know yet but uh, yeah it's really well done really well written uh, i can't remember the name of the author actually but it's great because it leaves you at the end of the chapter and actually there's been times where we, we have a cutoff point where it's lights out and a few times I, i've said look let's just read another chapter shall we because because it's really exciting and i want to carry on reading yeah. what happens next uh, yeah and he, and he goes yeah okay let's read another chapter um and then we have to get to a point where you get to the end of the chapter and then every at the end of every chapter you're thinking oh what's going to happen next but we have to we have to stop and turn lights out but mate, i mean well, i think that this is a great great point to uh just give listeners a little taster of a christmas song which is which is all about meeting santa claus <laughs> <laughs> go so, take it away so something about San, santa not exist it, santa does exist and it's uh, oh, really? an affirmation of santa existing yeah right and uh it's good it's very rock and roll Okay, uh, there you go. What did you think of that? Um, so we had uh, kind of three things you were listening for. Um, what's my family routine for bedtime stories? Um, and basically I talked about how my wife and I try to maintain my son's two languages. We read him stories on alternating nights. One night I read to him in my first language, English. And the other night, my wife reads to him in her first language, Spanish. And that way we try to make sure that he is uh, as bilingual as possible, uh, which I th we think will be great for him in the future. Um, the second thing was uh, what we think about children's imagination. Uh, Mike doesn't say much about this. I, I don't let him talk very much in this conversation. Um, but he wonders whether my son has a good imagination. Uh, and I say that I think all children have um, a good imagination, although I'm not sure if that's strictly true, of course. Everyone's got some kind of imagination, um, but inevitably some more than others, I suppose. Um, but we all have some kind of imagination, and we use imagination. Um, it's a natural uh, thing and it's actually part of our cognitive development we we need to be able to imagine uh, things to to uh, to grow up and for uh, to learn anything really uh, and certainly it's linked to our ability to learn and use language um, this this ability to uh, abstract to think in the in the abstract um, so but it, it's much harder uh, working with written language, and uh, we need help learning learning that. It doesn't doesn't come naturally um, when we're children. Uh, we need to be taught how to do it, both both reading and writing, especially writing. And certainly, my son is uh, 
uh, struggling a little bit with writing at the moment, but um, uh, we'll. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll get. He'll get. Uh, what am I saying? I don't know. Um, okay. So the other thing was why Mike believes that Father Christmas is real. Uh, one of the stories I'm reading to my son is is related to Christmas. I think we, we mentioned the name was uh, um, the night I met Father Christmas. Um, <clears throat> I mean, the story's not actually about Christmas exactly, but um, for some people, it might be a bit strange or a bit weird that we're talking about Christmas in, in April. Uh, well, why not? Uh, I, know, I know some people who, who seem to get quite annoyed if you even mention something out of season. So if it's, you know... Uh, but it's, it's actually it's usually to do with Christmas. People get annoyed when you you talk about Christmas or you play a Christmas song in the summer, um, and you know we well we don't have um, those kinds of issues on the English Waffle. Uh, if we want to play some Christmas music, we play some Christmas music, and um, so if you listen to the song Mike plays, you'll understand why he believes in Father Christmas or Santa Claus. Uh, whatever name you, you'd like to give him. So <clears throat> that's the <clears throat> the outro to the episode today. Uh, normally, um, I look at a few language points. Um, I haven't gotten them ready yet for this week, so I will add something onto uh, the website. Uh, I'll possibly uh, re-edit this episode so that you've got some comments there about the language. Um, and... Uh, could be quite interesting. What we'd really like is for you to to listen to the episode and kind of write in to us with your doubts. Maybe a particular um, uh, way of speaking, a particular expression uh, that you kind of kind of understand, but you're not really sure why we would use it. Or maybe there's a particular uh, use of intonation that you find interesting, and you're you're curious about. Um, why we've why we said something in a particular way um or maybe there's just something in the conversation which mike and i take for granted something that we know all about but we don't realize that you uh find it difficult to understand what we're talking about um so write into us go onto the english waffle website go to the contact page contact us uh and just write us a message you can do it just through the page uh, you can click on the whatsapp button you can whatsapp us uh, whatever it is just get in touch and we'd really love to to hear from you so thanks for listening and um, look out for the next episode which will be a waffle bites episode um, in about a week's time and we'll leave you with uh, Ron Holden and who says there ain't no Santa Claus take it away Ron Santa Claus how lucky can I get Well, cause now I got my own self They dress me up and they cut my hair And now they're gonna give me the The chair I told you so